I literally have no idea what to do for the intro. How about this? Because you know I'm all about that bass, about that bass. Ah, bass up. I'm all about that bass, about that bass. Ah, bass. Nah, that's stupid. We're not as bad as Apple with like releasing a new iPhone every three months, but if you want to keep up to date with the latest Dapp and Music Player releases, videos and reviews, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. We have all your favorite audiophile gear right here at Moon Audio. iBaso is a staple brand here at Moon Audio, and for good reason too. They have an incredibly resolute and neutral sound, iBaso DAPs are also known for their extreme customization options. Their products incorporate a replaceable amp card design that can switch out I.O., amplifier, and more to customize your music player to how you want to listen to your music. They represent an incredible value as well for the price point. They just released the latest flagship player, the DX320, a follow-up to their previous flagship, the DX300. It was a popular music player and it features one of, if not the best screens on the market for a portable music player. We'll get to that in a bit, but I like to call them the iPhones of the DAP world. They go aesthetically in the opposite direction that say Estelle and Kern does with smoother edges and stunning colors. So let's not waste any time and see if the DX320 makes enough improvements over the previous flagship to warrant an upgrade for existing users or a must buy for new ones. I'm a big fan of the design of the DX320. They didn't really change it much from the DX300 and they didn't have to, to be honest. Let's take a quick look at the IO. So up top, you'll find the USB-C charging port and the coaxial port. On the left side, is the micro SD card slot. On the right side is the volume knob, which is really the only visible difference from the DX300, as the new one is silver, where it was gold on the 300. I actually preferred the gold color personally because it matched with the gold on the headphone jacks on the amp card. There's also the play pause button and the track skip forward and back. On the bottom is the Amp 11 MK2S card, with a 4.4 balanced, 2.5 balanced, and a 3.5 millimeter unbalanced headphone jack. We'll talk more about the amp card in a minute. The screen is a gorgeous 6.5 inch bezel-less design sporting a 2340 by 1080 resolution. It's snappy, the colors are vibrant, and it's just an absolute joy to use. There is also an indicator light on the top of the screen, which displays the working status of the player. It's worth mentioning that the screen specs are no different than the DX300, but that's not a complaint by any means, as it's hard to find another DAP out there to match it. I think it's starting to feel a little on the large side when it comes to DAPs. I mean, with the removable amp cards, it's hard to work around that, but I do appreciate the fact that it doesn't weigh like a brick despite the size. I really do like the size of the DX240, for example, but the 240 can't fit a 6.5 inch screen either. So either way, it's a trade off. So there might be some shared hardware with the original DX300, but there is one thing that is very, very different with the new DX320, and that is the DAC chip. The new flagship is configured with a dual BD 34301 EKV ROM chip rather than the previous quad DAC Cirrus Logic setup in the DX300. This is the main event. ROM's high-grade MUS ICTM series emphasizes spatial reverberation, quietness, and dynamic range when it comes to sound reproduction. In short, it's a pretty substantial upgrade in sonic fidelity over the Cirrus Logic chips. I'll get to more A-B testing between the two in the comparison section coming up. For my testing setup, I paired the iBaso DX320 DAP with the Focal Celeste and a Silver Dragon Premium cable and the Meze Audio Elite headphones with a Silver Dragon Premium cable as well. 
Ibeso's implementation of the BD chips is impressive. The first thing out of the gate is the natural yet dynamic personality of the DAP sound. The DX320 handles every genre I listen to with ease. The ROM chip is very natural sounding and with rock, jazz, alternative, and blues, it's the depth of the sound that really stands out to me. I can really make out and feel the lower extension with bombastic movie soundtracks. Clarity in the mids and the slight roll off in the higher frequencies make for a smooth listen. Whereas the DX300 was more on the analytical side in signature, the DX320 is just that much more enjoyable to use. Again, the imaging is superb and classical music combined with the soundstage and natural tonality of the DAC makes for livelier performances no matter what headphone you decide to pair with the DX320. Between both the Focal Celeste and the Meze Elite, there was more transparency and definition with the Elite, but that is to be expected given the driver technology and the price difference. So let's get a few things out of the way. The DX320 shares the same eight core Snapdragon 660 as the 300, the same 128 gigabyte internal storage, same RAM, same screen, same Bluetooth 5.0, same IO, same size, same maximum output of 7.1 VRMS, same batteries and similar enough measurements across the board. This is not to say that there aren't some major differences between the two because as we already discussed, the new DAC sound is substantially improved over the DX300, hands down. The AMP11 card has also been revamped for the DX320. The only downside of this better sound trade-off is the battery life. The DX320 has an average of 10 hours of battery, whereas the DX300 had almost 15. Now, 10 hours is nothing to shake your head at, but in this hobby, I'll gladly trade a few hours for better sound. It's not a tough decision by any means. The other perk is that the DX320 is updated to the latest Android 11. It's snappy and responsive and allows for a lot of APK compatibility since it's a completely open system on the iBaso players. Although, install at your discretion. Wait, Ricky, why should they install Android APKs at their own discretion? Basically just saying that because it's an open design, it's an open system, you can literally download anything onto it that's in the APK store, despite the fact that sometimes, depending on the source, it could break your system. And that's the only downside to APK. Let's talk about the new AMP 13 card that just came out. <clears throat> oh God, that hurts. Ibeso has packed this card with a 6th gen Korg new tube. A lot like what Estelle and Kern did with their SP2000T music player, the vacuum tube sound might appeal to some out there who like a lot of warmth and toastiness in their music. I wouldn't consider the vintage sound for everyone, but it would certainly be a good sonic option for jazz, blues, folk, classic rock, and more. The Amp 13 also has different I.O adopting dual 3.5 single to jacks, one designed with a low noise tube output and the other with a maximized output so that you can fluctuate between your preference of how strong you want the tube signature. So this is how we're going to switch out the amp card on an iBaso DAP. So essentially uh, each amp card uh, comes with a little tool here that helps you screw these out on the bottom. Each amp card has two screws on it. Uh, one important thing to note before you do any of this, turn off the device. You do not want to be switching out these amp cards with your device on because you can very much harm it. So now with things out, rather than killing your fingernails on these very small tiny grooves, is just take a headphone cable Plug it in, pull it out. That easy. So here we have the original Mark II Amp 11, Mark II S. So we'll just put that over here. Grab your new card. Should fit in just like that. There are small little grooves that align it. 
should just snap right in and just screw it back up. The DX320 DAT from Ibeso is a true flagship music player. The new ROM DAC sounds absolutely amazing, and I'm a huge fan of the removable amp card design, allowing you to swap out modules to help customize your player to how you want to listen to your music. The DX320 sounds better, more depth, better imaging, better low-end presence, the high-end roll-off is smooth, and yet the clarity is still present and detailed. Sound-wise, it's a definite upgrade from the DX300. Now, is it worth an upgrade for those who already own the DX300? I don't think so. The Android 11 is a smoother and more refined experience, but I'd say wait, the incremental upgrades just don't justify a completely new buy. But for those who aren't familiar with iBaso or have one of their earlier models, say like the 200 series, then the DX320 is an absolute steal for flagship level performance and sound for a very unflagship price. Like I said before, iBaso represents amazing value for what you get and how much you spend, and the DX320 music player is just that. We'll include a link to the full review below where you can find more info, sound impressions, a more detailed comparison with the DX300, the new Amp 13 overview, and more. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up and remember to subscribe so you don't miss our latest videos and reviews. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.